when we talk about WWE, you know, all things ultimately begin, middle, and end with Vincent K. McMahon. We know this. This is not a surprise. This is not anything new. This is also not inaccurate. Because when it comes to that company, it always has and always will beginning, middle, end with Vincent K. McMahon. And you'll say, well, what about when he di dies? You think that's going to stop this son of a bitch? I'm just saying. Like, this guy has been the WWE for over 40 years. He has been that dude. He has been the totalitarian dictator. You could talk about executive boards. You could talk about creative committees. You could talk about, well, the kids are in place. You've got Hunter there. No. He was the head mf -er in charge. Everything ultimately that involved that company had to have, has to have his sign-off, his input, his alignment, his agreement. We know that to be true. So there were certainly a lot of WWE fans that when the news hit last year, of Vince McMahon retiring, we're excited, right? Because they said, man, now you get a change. And now you're going to have somebody else in charge of creative. And that's been the bane of the existence of so many wrestling fans, so many WWE fans for so long. They're like, if Vince would just get the fuck out of the way when it comes to creative, because this son of a bitch loves to book for himself. And he's putting things on TV solely and entirely and exclusively to entertain himself, not the fans, himself. To which you could certainly say there is a long history that points to that's not off the mark. You know there are plenty of things you've seen over the years that only happen because Vince wants it to happen. It's only because Vince thinks it's going to be a good idea. And at the end of the day, if Vince can pop Vince by saying, that's such good shit, then that's all that really matters. And your thought was, with him having to retire, being forced out, was that Hunter was going to be in charge. Praise God on everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. By God, it's a new era for WWE and their creative. And it's going to be a more enjoyable experience for you as a fan. Ha! <laughs> and then, <laughs> the McMahon mastermind plan goes into effect in 2023 and he says... Fuck that! I'm coming back! That's right! I'm an 80% shareholder! It all still goes through me, bitches! And not only that, I don't trust anybody else. I'm going to be back to make sure the sale of WWE goes the way I want it so I can make a shit ton of money for myself. And all of you were like, oh God, here we go again. But there were some of you that bought in that, hey... Vince can't be in charge of creative because of SEC related things. He can't be in charge of creative because I've said so. He can't be in charge of creative because Hunter is there. He can't do this. He can't do that. And when the fuck has that ever stopped Vince McMahon, right? But you had those other cynical fans that said they could see the writing on the wall. They could see this coming. And they're like, it's only a matter of time before Vince takes over creative or has an incredible amount of say on it. Because at the end of the day, he can't fucking help himself. He's addicted to it. And you've started to see reports in recent weeks come out that he's starting to have more and more say. It was Omas and Lesnar was his idea. That was his push. Then you talk about right after WrestleMania, you know, you get the interview that him and Ari um, did on um, CNBC talking about the sale to Endeavor and Vince said, when he's asked about whether he's going to be involved with creative, he's like, yes and no. He can't be in the weeds as much, which you know is bullshit when we're talking about Vince. But, you know, some looked at that and said, yeah, what the fuck does that mean? He's going to oversee it, but he can't be as much in the weeds. Yeah, that, yeah, right, exactly. And then you find out on Monday night, there was a ton of rewrites and there was everything else. You know, scripts being torn up and redone multiple times. You're like, ah, Vince is back in charge of creative. It's the same old shit. Ah, God! Fire Vince! Fire Vince! There you go, there's a great idea. Pay money to go to a fucking WWE show and attempt to hijack it by chanting Fire Vince to the guy. 
that is still in charge of the fucking place. Who, by the way, you've made even richer because you gave him his your money to go to his show. <laughs> oh, the, the brain power of the wrestling community sometimes is astounding. But this whole thought, this whole notion of Vince being back in charge of creative, look, if he is, he is. And if he isn't, he isn't. It's not going to matter that much. It really doesn't. I know some of you believe so much in God and you say, well, no, no, no. Triple H is really good at creative. Triple H knows what he's doing. My God, the rating sense of Vince went away. They've actually went up. Ah, okay. You want to believe that it's just because of that? There are other factors at play. Um, but, but let's, let's get real here. You know, I certainly have been a massive critic of Vince and his creative vision for over a decade now, right? I have a long documented history on this channel and on social media of doing just that. But it is very easy and it's obviously human nature to focus on the negative sometime. But you can't just focus on that. If Vince's creative was so bad, then his company wouldn't make nearly the amount of money that they do. Some of that, sure, is due to the machine and due to some of the other business decisions that they make. I get you, and that's true. But if it was truly that abysmal and it was truly that bad, more people would have stopped watching than already have over the past 10 to 15 years. And as much as you want to talk about all the bad and dog shit that you've seen come from him over the years, you also have to give him credit for things like Daniel Bryan and his run in WrestleMania up to WrestleMania 30. Vince was in charge for that. If you were down with that, then that's Vince. And you say, well, it probably wasn't his idea. At the end of the day, who's the fucking guy running the show? Everything that appears on WWE television goes through Vince. A few years ago, if you were big on Kofi Mania like I was and you wanted that moment, that shit came under Vince. As much as you might want to talk about all the great bloodline stuff with Sami Zayn and the Usos and Roman. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but Vince was there for the first two-ish years of Roman at the top, right? As the champion in this run. It's not like Roman just instantly became interesting only when Vince left and Triple H was in charge of the book and the writing. And that's not fucking true at all. I'm just saying. So, for everybody that's sitting there and freaking out because Vince is gonna be back in charge of creative, Honestly, how much different is it really going to be? Now, maybe in terms of like Raw is going to be feel a little bit more unbearable, probably. SmackDown is going to feel a little bit of like it's a tougher watch, sure. But it's not like either one of those shows have been great for quite a while now. And that didn't change that much when it went from Vince to Hunter being in charge of creative Get Real. And frankly, if Hunter was such a great goddamn creative mind, then how come NXT's ratings aren't fucking better? How come their viewership numbers aren't better? Hmm? 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 Don't really have an answer for that one, do you? No. Here's what I implore all WWE fans that might be frustrated at the thought of Vince McMahon being back in charge of creative to do. Breathe in. Breathe out. Because, one, it won't be forever. Even though you have to know especially with the mustache and the hair dye and everything else, like Vince McMahon is trying to figure out a way to cheat father time and death just long enough to where he can get an AI version built of himself so that way he can run the company forever! Oh, I'd be such good shit running my company, my baby, from beyond the grave. But even if he doesn't, the man is, what, 77, soon to be 78 years old? No matter what, it's a matter of time. And for a lot of you, many of you that have been frustrated for years, 
You have put up with this shit for years. What's another one, two, three, four years really going to do for you? Right? And is it so much better under Hunter the past year that you're going to notice that significant of a difference with Vince being in charge of creative? I don't think so. Maybe you'll say, well, some of the stories are a little more coherent and they get more of a chance to be built and get laid out properly. But last time I checked, the WrestleMania build was kind of meh and that was largely with Hunter in charge of creative. So honestly, this is almost one of these instances where sometimes for wrestling fans, it is therapeutic and helpful for us to have something to bitch about. That's true. And I believe that. Yeah, I certainly ascribe to that because I do it. And sometimes it is therapeutic to have something to have a, an outlet for, something to vent about. But as bad as we used to think Vince McMahon's booking and writing and creative vision was, because in a lot of ways it was, it's not like there's a whole lot of better alternatives out there within the company, and Hunter certainly doesn't represent that. So, the best thing I suggest for now is just buckle up, boys and girls, and deal with the bitches, because we ain't going to be able to do shit about it. If Vince is fully back in charge of creative, so what? If he's overseeing it, but he's allowing Triple H a large amount of autonomy, so what? It ain't going to make a whole lot of difference in the grand scheme of damn things. It's still going to be WWE, and you're either going to watch and bitch about it or not watch and bitch about it either way. So we might as well move on with our fucking lives and figure out how to come to grips with the new reality.